We are back, video number 16. So if you are new to this, make sure you watch all previous videos to make more sense of everything we're actually talking about because they are made in a sequence to bring you to this point. And as they are made in a sequence, so you get immediate results from step number one, can br bring your step number two in afterwards, and so on and so forth. So we've been brainstorming uh, the topic for today, and we came to conclusions that both of us have been really lucky to have great mentors in our lives, coaches. We all also try to improve ourselves all the time. I still have a coach that I speak to every single week, sometimes every other week if, if there are some holidays in, uh, interactions, and she's an actually girl. Uh, so, and uh, the way we would love to kind of dwell into is how can people understand what would be the right source for them in terms of coaching, maybe picking the right book and so on and so forth. So they don't waste their time, their money and things uh, similar to those. And uh, what coaching really is, because a lot of people think it's just handing out templates and forgetting about everything else. So what would be your first kind of insight on what do you tell someone coaching should be about and how to determine that you are getting your value for money yeah so the first thing that i would say is whenever you're looking for a mentor or coach or just information right on your goal is <clears throat> not so much the goal that you envision like the end product that's like great like hey i want x okay it doesn't really matter what it is the next step is if you can't do this then this is a good like heuristic to tease out from a coach or a source what are the steps that need to be in play before to get you on the path to that end goal right like what things need to be changed in your life first in order to move towards the goal because it doesn't matter the goal if you pick a goal, the reason is because you're not there yet, right? You need to get there. There are things that need to happen here where you're currently at in order to even start moving in that direction, right? And so that's actually what I would concentrate most of my effort in. First, probably just Google, right? Like, hey, what are the steps to get to X? What you know, And then you can start getting like some basics of like, okay, well, these are kind of the things that I need to be like, looking for right so then when you go and look for a coach or anybody right it could be a friend at the gym or whatever right um, or you know if we're talking about financial goals you know it's people in finance and stuff like that they should be talking about those same concepts that you googled or, or found in the book of like oh well these are the first steps that we need to get in order if they're not doing that and they're just like okay yeah let's get started and they throw you a program or you know, whether it's nutrition or exercise or whatever, but they never actually talk through the steps that need to happen that we need to ensure right off the bat, you can rest assured that they're, it's going to take a lot for sure. It's going to take a lot longer than it should because you're both not on the same page hmm. period. Right. He's like he or she or whatever. The coach is like, here's the program starts following the program. And you're like, okay, I'll follow the program. But there was no clear in two weeks or three weeks, we want to have accomplished these lifestyle changes. And that right off the bat will take longer than necessary to change if you're not both on the same page of we need to change these first little parameters first to get you moving in the right direction. That little part seems like it should sort itself out, but it doesn't. It, it's not one of those things that does. Uh, and I'm sure that you could probably think of some examples um, in mood, right? Like just making sure that you're in the right mindset to accomplish the goal is probably step number one. Like you got to change your brain before you change anything else. So what, why don't you tell us a little bit about like how you kind of get that going with, with clients, like even clients that are already been clients, right? How do you keep that rolling? Yeah, so it's it's interesting to me is uh, what you just highlighted out is that people have bought into this concept of six week transformation, twelve week transformation, eight week challenge, or this and that, and 
you can challenge challenge the health you want, but you are not starting in a good place. It's not going to really lead anywhere. This is why what we talked about in previous videos about get your blood test done, make sure your fitness levels are on par, make sure you get your basic nutritional kind of layout in, in place. And only then you can reach out to somebody who's plugging in and kind of ass assessing what kind of challenges you going to be dealing with and help you overcome those challenges and also show you opportunities what kind of opportunities you can have let's say from by drinking more water hey you're going to have more energy i spoke to somebody yesterday morning and this, this guy said i drink two liters more water than usual he's 140 kilos body weight and i felt great and i didn't even eat all day and i'm like what we've we been talking about all this time you know mm -hmm. and, and it's amazing uh because uh to me coaching is all about uh understanding what you are missing there is always someone who knows more than you and what you mentioned about going to gym with your friend for example and whatnot and whilst your friend has best intentions for you it doesn't mean he knows much about it as well this is why it's so important to find the right coach not just someone who is going to tell you hey follow this and it's going to get you there because it helped me you don't know their mindset. You don't know their physiology. You don't know anything about their financial state. Can they even afford chicken and whatnot? Can they go and do this when they are traveling? Can they and all those kind of things need to come into play, and that's where coach interaction is really, really beneficial. When it's not about telling you what to do, it's about finding out what you already do well, and then finding out opportunities what you could improve in your specific environment in your specific lifestyle so why don't you talk about uh why people should reach out to coach you know i have a lot of times uh heard i used to work in gym and i used to have these people coming in the gym and say hey i'm gonna get fit then i'm gonna reach out to you i'm gonna start doing this then i'm gonna reach out to you and i usually tell them okay do you go buy a car wreck your car and then get driving instructor because that's what you're trying to do now so yeah, I would like yeah. to I would like to get your input on this. Why people would even need to or want to get a coaching when people don't realize that coaching is pretty much same as picking up a book. To acquire a new skill, you need someone who knows that skill and helps you along the way. So yeah, why yeah, coaching yeah. and uh, any other thoughts on that? Yeah. So <clears throat> kind of. Uh, uh just like a book right like a book about information about the subject that you're wanting to change right there's always an introduction right like hey these are the concepts that you need to find and change or or know about before you can really understand the end product any book kind of works that way as far as like a learning style book and even like a fiction book right there's an introduction of the characters there's an introduction of the storyline and all of that before it all unfolds it's the same thing with a coach with any endeavor you know literally any endeavor they are there hopefully to lay out the concepts that are small that lead to the big picture first and if they're not already doing that as, as far as coaching goes right like anybody can give you a program a nutritional program or an exercise program and you can follow it, but you can actually be doing it wrong. A perfect example is macros, okay? Like every coach, nutritional coach, is going to give you macros these days. The problem that I have with macros is not so much that macros don't work. Like, yes, you need to have higher protein. Yes, you need to balance your fats and your carbs and all of that. But it's the details that start to matter. Okay, when should you be having your carbs? What time of year should you maybe not be having your carbs? Or for you specifically, maybe it's like, hey, we need to cut all the carbs out as much as possible so that we can rectify some blood markers, right? There are details to these macronutrients. And if the coach doesn't explain you why he's doing, like not necessarily that every coach need you, needs to explain everything that they change, but at the beginning, like you started with this coach last week, you should have a very clear picture of why you're eating in this manner, right? Because it's about changing your mindset around the goal, right? If, if you 
want change. It's because you're currently not in the position that you want to be for of whatever goal it is, or exercise or nutrition. We'll just talk about nutrition. It's a little bit easier to, to talk about, but currently you're not eating like you should be eating to reach your goal. So the coach gives you a program and the coach should explain, hey, this is what you're currently doing. And I kind of looked at your deep, your day, right? Like I always take in a person's day. Whenever I start with a program, I literally ask them, hey, from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, I want to know what time you woke up and everything that happened in between the time you went to bed. So that then I can be like, okay, at this time of day, this is what you're currently doing. So these are the things that I want you to do. And this is why I want you to do them. At this you know, later part of the day, maybe you train or something like that. I want you to eat this way. And this is why I'm wanting you to eat that way to accomplish these things. Once that starts to happen and the, the, the client starts to understand these are the reasons why, they are way more likely to repeat them and be able to repeat them day after day because they can just remind themselves, oh, I'm doing it because of this. Boom, let's do, do it. I'm doing this and then that leads into the next thing and so on. And it starts to change their mindset around the thing that you want to change because that's where it all starts. So that's really the value of having a coach is somebody that can explain and start changing your mindset or giving you more clarity of the of the, the little things that you have to do every day. Not so much telling you when to eat and what to do what, but telling you why you should be changing some of the things that you're currently doing into the things that he wants you to do or she wants you to do. Um, yeah, because the mind really is, the is obviously uh, the most important part in terms of energy as well. You know, you can come in a gym and have the most sophisticated training plan and never get stronger if you are not training intensely with purpose. Because we always see this, hey, consistency going to get you there, consistency going to get you here. I'm consistently eating and driving every single day. It doesn't make me a bloody world-class chef and F1 driver. If I was were to consistently do that with intent, I would become better at it. I would be better cook. I would be better driver, so yeah. on and so forth. But I've, I've been driving for God knows how long since I started to walk. And I'm still a terrible driver. <laughs> you know, same same with your coaching. If, no, uh, yeah, yeah. So, if your coach can't get across that your mindset needs to change about these things and it's not good that I only give you these templates, uh, nothing's going to get anywhere. And this is why I would like you to kind of dwell into what do you think are the most common downfalls at the moment when you have market saturated with a lot of coaches and whatnot? How do you find that this coach is not fit for what I want to do? Or maybe I am not ready to be coached. So what would be, uh, I can't call them red flags, but what would be highlights that you think you see, hey, this guy is not coachable. He needs to step back. I, I've had quite a few of those people when uh, I refuse to coach them. When I go through online questionnaire, uh, when I just kind of like, look, you're not ready. You're just going to be wasting your money and my time. Uh, so how can people recognize that coach is probably not pulling their weight or maybe that they are not in the right mindset yet to even get a coach? Yeah. So as far as like not being in the right mindset, um, would be timeline. Like that's the biggest red flag for me because I always ask them, okay, you gave me a goal. How long do you have dedicated in your mind? to be focused towards that goal. Mm -hmm. And right away, if it's like extremely short, eight weeks, 10 weeks, whatever, uh, uh, right away I start to, to, to question whether they're in the right mindset or at least been maybe they've been led to believe certain things that put them in the wrong mindset, right? That's probably red flag number one, like timeline, of, especially when it's like a, a fairly decent goal. I wanna lose 30 pounds of body fat, right? And, and change my pre-diabetic state. I'm like, oh, that's not going to happen in 10 weeks or 12 weeks. Yeah, but, but I'm not willing really to do cardio or I can't go out or I can't do this. And... Right, right, right. So the, the, that's kind of like the red flags. First one is timeline. Next one is do they have certain lifestyle factors that make it difficult to lay out, lay out the basics 
of the steps that need to happen to get to their goal. Like all our previous videos that we've talked about, hey, we need to get you outside, we need to get you moving, but maybe they have, they literally work nights, okay? So that's a big red flag in the wrong direction of things that they need to accomplish. If their goal is simple or they're like, hey, I don't care how long it takes, okay, I'm, I'm, that's still okay. But if they're like, hey, I'm, I'm getting ready for a wedding at, in, in, in summertime, and I need to lose 30 pounds, plus I work nights or shift work, then it's like, okay, this is kind of a red flag. I'm going to lay you out why this is a red flag and some of the things that need to change in order to even accomplish it. And then sometimes the answer is like, they're just not willing to do that. And then I, I go, well, you're going to waste your time and your effort, and you're not going to be satisfied. Yeah. Change the goal. Or, you know, sometimes it's like, hey, can you afford to change some of your lifestyle factors to meet that goal? Sometimes it, it the goal is not the not possible for everybody, like just with their personal like style, right? Like it's not so much about like the biology at that point. Like, hey, everybody can lose body fat. Yes, that's a fact. But sometimes your lifestyle makes that nearly impossible. Yeah. It's just that simple. Um, and that's where it really comes down to a coach, a good coach should be able to lay that fact on you and give you the reasons why, hey, we cannot accomplish this goal in this timeline with this lifestyle. They have to match in order to get it done correctly. And that's one of the biggest red flags that I find, like the just the timeline and their lifestyle is not conducive yet to the goal they want. There are you can change each one of those, right? So that's the thing is then a good coach can be like, hey, if we can change two or three things in your lifestyle, we can change a couple things with your goal, maybe the timeline, maybe the aggress, the amount of weight loss or weight gain, whatever you're trying to do. Um, and the route we get there, you know, we can change all these things. Now they can kind of fit and I can actually get you there in six months instead of three months. But you didn't, you know, you're gonna have to give a little in your lifestyle. You're going to have to give me a little bit here on the timeline. Now we can mesh it out if they're willing to do that. But that's the, those are the conversations that you should be having with your coach when you first sign up with a coach that you've never met before, right? Those are the types of conversations that start to tell you as the client, okay, this person has made a lot of good points and is really getting me thinking in a different mindset about my goal and that this thing that I'm trying to accomplish is a life change, right? Because if it's not a life change, when you get the goal, guess what will end up happening? You just go right back to what you were doing before because you accomplished the goal and, and it didn't change your lifestyle. At the end of the day, a lot of what we're talking about is about changing your lifestyle. So for the long term, you're moving in a positive direction with health, longevity, perf uh, you know, physical performance and like I don't want to say like body composition is everything, but most likely physical performance, mental performance is going to lead to better body composition anyway. Like if you're doing all these things that we're talking about. So that's really where my focus is when I get somebody new, like with the first interview, the first whatever that we talk about, I actually spend more time talking about this stuff than their goal because their goal doesn't exist in this current state. Period. That's why they're that's why they're contacting you, right? Yeah. Hey, I need to reach this goal. I don't know how, or I don't even know if it's possible, or whatever. And so I, that's the majority of the conversation. Here's where you're at. These are the things that need to change. Some of them are on you. Some of them are on the timeline. And now the goal starts to look more re like a reality. And then the client can actually assess. Okay, that was a lot longer than I thought it was going to take. I actually don't have a budget for that sometimes that's the answer right like sometimes the answer is i don't really have a budget for seven months of coaching with you but thank you for telling me everything that needed to happen in the realistic timeline now i can start you know because some of the first steps that i tell them are sh things that they can do themselves like they don't need me to do them but me as the coach will be making sure that they do them if they do hire me at the beginning but some people are so self self-motivated enough that they can look at some of these uh, previous videos that we've mentioned of like the basics that need to be happening. And if they already know that those aren't happening, 
they can start doing that themselves. And if, you know, they haven't watched any of these videos, that's some of the conversation that I'm going to have with them at the beginning. And when we hang up, maybe they're like, well, I'm not really ready to coach with you because I, you know, whatever circumstance, but you gave me a lot of insight on the first things that I can be doing. And maybe in a month or two, I'm in a better position and I'll contact you again. That's really the biggest thing. I think this is uh, the strongest point you just kind of highlighted that people are so reluctant to kind of take in. This has to be a lifestyle change. You know, like I compared, hey, driving a car, you people go in the gym first and they say, I'm going to get fit and then I'm going to reach out to coach or whatever. But they're not going to do the same when they go and learn some kind of skill. They want to learn from skilled master to acquire their knowledge within a week instead of 10 years trying to figure it out themselves. And when, when it comes to fitness, health and all these kind of things, people are, it, it's almost as if they are delusional. They think I'm going to do this one thing for a few weeks. I'm going to get there and it's going to stay there. Whereas if they go to someone like say business coach, they know they're going to learn skills about how to be more tax efficient. They're going to learn skills about how to invest their money. They're going to learn skills about how to do marketing, sales, how to kind of collaborate with people. And they have to do that for the rest of their lives now if they don't want to be where they were before that business coaching. Whereas when it comes to health and all these kind of things, people are still kind of adamant to not change. Like, I'm just going to do this to get in shape. And then I'm going to go and eat tacos every night and whatever, you know. Uh, so this brings me to point where what do you think people can do to understand if they are coachable now? What needs to happen? What needs to kind of become the realization and how to become coachable? You know, uh, most of the time it's putting your ego aside. You know, yeah, you've been in a gym 15 years. Who cares? You still look the same as 15 years ago. Get a coach. You know, or yeah, yeah, you've been following this diet for God knows how long and you run around and tell how amazing it is, but you're not healthy, you're not strong, you're not fit and you, you're miserable because you can't enjoy your social events and whatnot. So what would you say, how, how can I even word it right, would be how to become coachable? What steps someone can take to kind of go, hey, I can't do this because of they have a million excuses to, hey, I'm ready to do this. Uh, is there yeah. any way that can be even developed as a system for everyone? Hey, you go through this, now you're going to be really good kind of for mentoring. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing that I would say is not everybody is coachable with the same coach, period. Okay, so there is a personality thing that kind of goes yeah. into this. So that's why I don't take on anybody, you know, even if they fill out a question and give me their whole life story in an email. I don't take them on, even if they look good on paper. The very first thing is exactly what me and you are doing here. It's a Zoom call, and it's just to get to know you and get to feel you out to see if we're going to get along even, right? Like as far as like, hey, you know, you're kind of an interesting person to talk to because there's going to be a lot of talking, like whether it's through text or email or phone to phone. So that's number one. Be a person that is willing to talk about the everything that you need to talk about with your coach. Um, if that doesn't exist, number one, forget about that exact coach because if you you know they rub you wrong or maybe they just I don't know it could it literally could be whatever turns you off about that person. Just like when you go to a bar, there's certain people that you're like oh, I don't really want to go over there. I don't really feel like I don't feel that vibe. So that's number one, right? Like make sure that your personalities not not necessarily they need to be like meshed together, but that you're okay with your coach and you like the personality of your coach. That's number one. Number two, as far as like becoming coachable, is realizing that the reason you're re reaching out to a coach or this specific coach is because you feel that they are going to tell you the things to change and you're willing to change those things. Not necessarily irrelevant of what they cost, but irrelevant of how uncomfortable it makes you feel, mm. right? So, you know, because a coach isn't necessarily going to, you know, ask you to invest two thousand dollars in equipment or whatever they shouldn't be asking you that they should be there should be a way to work out or uh 
uh, meal prep or whatever without significantly increasing your financial cost or significantly increasing your burden on your finances, although there will be some. But the biggest thing will be the coach is asking you to change very specific things about your day or your exercise plan or nutrition plan uh, or, or even your when you go to bed and when you wake up, right? Like actual changes to your lifestyle and you got to be willing to change those. If you're already coming in the mindset of like, hey, I'm not really going to change anything about my lifestyle, but this coach is going to tell me what to eat and that's going to fix everything. Like if you come in with that mindset of, He's going to tell me what to eat and that's going to change everything. You're already looking at it backwards. A, you know, AKA look back at all the other episodes that we met or that we made. Um, almost none of them talk about food. Like they just don't because those are not the things that need to be put in place to be successful with food and exercise. So most people in this coaching environment are going to be only focusing on the exercise and the food and neglecting all the basics that we've been talking about. And a good coach is gonna change the basics first, then introduce the changes with the nutrition, you know, and they can be at the same time, but the coach should be highlighting, hey, these basics are very important and we need to get you to change them and be consistent with those changes. In fact, the first month, most of the time, I don't really care too much about the person going off the rails with their food or cheating on their meal plan or whatever that will happen i expect it to happen right and so i'm not i never reprimand them and i never want them to feel because see that's important like failure starts changing your mindset that you're going to fail anyway right so right off the bat i tell people i'm like when you start with me i don't care about your check-in as far as I missed my food or I, you know, ate over eight at night two or three times or whatever. I'm never going to reprimand them to them or be like, you need to fix that next week. In fact, the thing that I focus on immediately when they tell me that is what happened that day? Did you go for a walk that morning? What time did you wake up? Were you extra stressed? You see what I mean? I, I want to know what led to them overeating first. And most often it's like, well, no, I kind of stopped waking up and going outside two days in and stuff like that. I'm like, well, that changes your mindset right away because I, I don't want it to sound too like hippie, but getting the basics right starts to change how you think about your entire day, really. And then once it changes how you think and how you feel, you make better decisions around food and training, right? So if you're making bad decisions about food and training, I automatically go, okay, well, what are you doing in your lifestyle that's making you or not letting you make correct decisions, right? And so that's where I start to focus. The first month is just checking after checking of, hey, are you doing the basics? Are you doing the basics? And then after a month, I'm like, okay, you're doing the basics. How's your nutrition been? And then sure enough, the first week or two was a little rough. By the end of the month, it's like, hey, I'm actually doing really good. And then it's like, okay, well, that's because I was focused on making sure that the basics are the things that are changing and being consistently adhered to. Month number two comes around and then it's like, okay, let's mess with your nutrition a little bit. Let's dial that in a little bit tighter because now I know that you can be more consistent with the food because your mindset has started to change because you're doing the basics correctly. Yeah, and I see that a lot with uh, <clears throat> people that are not willing to do that because they feel... Uh... I think the term sacrifice has been dragged out about way too wrong because it's an investment. It's an investment in your health. It's an investment in your in your future because the healthier, fitter you are, the more productive you're going to be in everything else you do in life. And uh, the big part of being coachable to, to me is uh, understanding that you are not where you want to be. You, you know, yeah. you, you have to realize that because a lot of times people are, yeah, I'm happy where I am. But I just want to be leaner. Well, it's it kind of contradicts itself, you know. <laughs> you can't be same the way you are and become leaner, stronger, fitter if you're not changed the way you are. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and and that yeah. needs to be understood that for you to be coachable, you need to leave your old self behind. The way I gave an example of business, you can't have same exact habits with your finances now. To become wealthier, develop more stuff for others to help out, so they they kind of reward you for that and all those kind of things. People understand that, 
Whereas when it comes to fitness and health, people just ignore it completely. Yeah, yeah they think it's a temporary thing. Better, they need to change. Yeah, yeah, they think it's a temporary thing. They think if I just do this for a little while, it fixes everything and then I can kind of slide back a little bit to my old lifestyle. And, and that's the first thing I tell them. I'm like, well, you don't really want to look at it like that because that already sets you up in the wrong mentality that you're not actually all in with a change that needs to happen right um and once you once you commit like okay so somebody comes in and they're like okay i just need a change i'm currently not where i want to be i want to go there what are the things that change when that starts to happen you end up with people that just accomplish some really ridiculous things like i've been part of uh you know a, a coaching a client that's literally stepped into their first bodybuilding show did excellent their background was athletic but never got as lean as they are now they're uh and this is a female she's five pounds bigger lean body mass than she's ever been in her whole entire life and she's five percent leaner than she's ever been in her, her whole entire life competed in a, in a physique composition did very well took i think second and now she's like I just want to continue doing more things. She's like, I didn't realize that I could just train. And she's, you know, in her mid thirties. So it's not like she's young or anything like that, but she's like, I didn't really think that I could make more progress than I already have because she has a very athletic background. Yeah. already. And now she's like, do you think that we could train to do like a, like a triathlon? She's like, I don't, I've always wanted to run. I'm like, yeah, why not? I'm like, are you ready to change? Like the very first thing she said to me, okay, this is a prime example. I want to train for a triathlon now, but I want to keep my same body composition and I'm okay with being a little bit smaller for the triathlon performance. And I go, okay, you've already laid out the things that you're willing to change and the things that you're okay that need to change and some things that you think we want to keep the same. So right away, it's things that she's in her mind already made her mind up. My body weight is going to change. My my uh, uh, training is going to change. She's already made those up in her mind. She's already completely okay with that. And she, she just goes, "What you you tell me what I need to do, right?" And so immediately her program changed completely. You know, because her goal changed completely from previously. Most people would find that those goals are similar. Hell, she just needs to do a little more running, and she'll do the triathlon. I'm like, no, no, no. Completely the whole thing's got to change. You see, the nutrition is now going to be different because the performance goal is different. So nutrition is going to change. Yeah. The exercise selection's got to change because we can't have her um, destroying her legs uh, if she's going to be running. You know, we can't have her destroying her lats if she's going to be swimming. So everything changed, right? And she immediately said, okay, that's what we're going to do, right? She didn't. And it's not so much that you don't want to question your coach. It's that and the moment, like you said, that your mindset is, I am not where I want to be and I need to change. You're more accepting of what are the changes that my coach is wanting me to do. And you're more accept and, and same, same principle. Hey, the first week, I didn't lay it all out on her, all of the changes. I just said, your training week is now going to be different. These are the reasons why. So first thing, we're going to take your same program and we're just going to lay it out in the new format. The first two weeks, I just want you to nail the correct training on the correct days. At the end of those two weeks, then we'll start making more changes. And she goes, perfect. That's excellent. That's easy to do. First steps is just get on the rhythm of the new training block, right? Then the next steps are let's start pushing performance and the new metrics, et cetera. And so, yeah, that's one of those things where a good client is somebody who's willing to change and that's the reason they have a coach is because they're wanting change they're not satisfied with their at where with where they're at even though technically she's at the best place she's ever been at right like she's the the leanest the biggest most muscular she's ever been and now she realizes i want a different goal what are the things that i need to change to to get to that goal yeah even though other people would be like whoa you know, other people would come at, the, at me in that same position saying exactly what, just, what you just said. I actually am really happy where I'm at, you know, list all the positive things. And then, but I want to do this triathlon. And I, immediately I go, well, 
you're actually not happy where you're at. You want a performance goal of a triathlon. You want to be somewhere else. So you got to wipe that mindset off the table and just realize this is where I'm at, but I want to change. And we need to change whatever needs the change to happen. And it's also, I think, a very important point is that people need to realize that you want to run for triathlon, you shouldn't be going to bodybuilding coach. <laughs> Or you want to be a strength athlete, you shouldn't be going to bikini coach. Or it needs to be, it does not even need to be someone you invest your money into. It can be like we have with, with our team. Like we just have a mastermind where we bounce ideas from each other. But I know you know more about this. Roderick knows more about that. Mircea, Scott, everything. You know, I reach out to people and I learn from people who know more than I do in areas I want to become better. Whereas people go when it comes to health and fitness and they go as their neighbor or in a coffee shop or their friend who has been in the gym for 15 years but has never been changed and uh, has been ill every three months and probably morbidly obese. You know, uh, <clears throat> when it comes to coaching for health and fitness and those kind of things, make sure that you are reaching out to persons that is actually qualified to do that. Like I like I mentioned earlier, that market is extremely saturated with health and fitness professionals, but that gives an opportunity to kind of everyone meet their uh, needs in terms of financial accessibility, timeline, and all those kind of things. So find someone who is at level you want to be, not someone who is just looks like they can deliver. Uh, because more often than not, because... No, that's, that's a good point, yeah, that that is a good point because there are levels to this, right? Just like I talked about, you know, the macros, any coach literally out there about nutrition, it could literally be somebody who's been doing it for a year or somebody who's been doing it for 20 years. They're going to give you some macros. The difference between, hopefully, the difference between the, the first coach and the second coach is the second coach understands that there are levels to this, okay? It's not just about giving you the macros. It's about giving you the right macros for the right goal, right? Yeah. Like this girl, for example, okay? She's now going to be more endurance dependent. Her protein content is actually going to go up in her nutrition, uh, but not as much as I would like because we also want her body weight to come down, right? Mm -hmm. um, so as far as like total calories go, they aren't going to go up, but protein is going to go up because of the nutritional requirements of that goal. And that's where uh, a lot of nutrition coaches will fall short because they don't actually know the details of what food is doing inside of you for the goal that you're doing right and so probably that's your protein will movement. not come from million of million tons of amino acids and protein shakes and god knows what else right 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 yeah that, that's one of the things is it's not going to be a eaa shakes and and protein shakes and all of that it's going to be real food because we also she's going to be probably having more hunger she's gonna be working out longer periods of time with the endurance stuff so it starts to become a completely different paradigm especially because we also want to get her a little smaller to to be able to execute well because she she doesn't want to just like do the triathlon she wants to do well right she's yeah she's one of those people that's like that i'm all in i actually want to see how well i can do right and so then it's like okay well we've got to reduce body weight there are certain parameters to do that so yeah some of the main things are so the just give me a summary a of experience coach. Give me a summary of what is a good coach and what needs to happen for you to be getting the most out of being coached. <clears throat> the the number one getting the most out of being coached is understanding that you need to change. That's as simple as it gets. Like anything is on the table to change. Uh, because a good coach is not going to cut your sleep. They're not going to tell you to start waking up at 2 a.m. or whatever, right? But there's probably going to be some major lifestyle changes or minor lifestyle changes, but there will be lifestyle changes uh, from a good coach and from a good goal. Like, hey, I'm here and I need to get there. So you know, that's number one, understanding that you will need to change some lifestyle things that probably aren't going to have to do with food or exercise. Uh, and then as far as like a good coach, a good coach is going to be able to lay that out. It's go he's, he's going to be able to detail and explain why the lifestyle changes need to be first 
and how those influence the big picture goal. That's really it. <laughs>